In this video, we're going to be looking at Ponagotchi, how you can set up and use the little guy. But, but what even is a Ponagotchi? Ponagotchi is a super cool Tamagotchi-like device that runs on a Raspberry Pi Zero. However, the twist being that he feeds off Wi-Fi. Instead of manually feeding him digital food, he'll munch away on Wi-Fi handshakes. The more Wi-Fi handshakes he captures, the happier he'll get. He's honestly so much fun to play around with. He even has a has a personality, like this this Raspberry Pi has a face. Though leave him without food for too long and he'll actually get angry with you and throw a hissy fit. It's it's really not pleasant. The second twist being that he runs on artificial intelligence, so over time he'll learn how to capture Wi-Fi handshakes better and tune his own parameters. I, I, I know this all sounds kind of kind of odd, so if you want a more in-depth explanation, then make sure to check out my previous video, which I will of course link in the description. But without further ado, this is a setup and tutorial video, so without further ado, let's get stuck in. You will need a Raspberry Pi Zero W with the header soldered on. This isn't as hard as it looks. Well, I, I don't think it looks that hard, but if you think it is hard, it, it's not. Any entry-level soldering station will work. Though, of course, you can buy a Pi Zero W with a header pre-soldered on, though it is slightly more expensive. Additionally, I assume you'll want to see your Ponagotchi's chubby little face, so I'll be using a Waveshare V2 e-ink display, and I will make sure to link the exact one I'm using here down in that description. And lastly, this is pretty obvious, but a micro SD card for your Pi and a micro USB data cable is required. Also, as a bonus, there are a ton of 3D printable Ponagotchi cases floating around the interwebs. If you're interested, I'll link them below. I should stress that this is the most basic Ponagotchi configuration that will get you up and running easy peasy, but there are a lot of other configurations out there, a lot of community mods. For example, there's a mod that adds a battery within the Ponagotchi itself, a hardware clock, or even a Ponagotchi Lite version, whereby you solder the display directly onto the Pi Zero W itself, so you end up with something that isn't as thick as this. Although that's that's pretty thin as it stands, like that's, that's pretty good. But anyway, to the installation, which is actually a lot easier than you may think for something as ingenious and inventive as this. So firstly, you'll need to grab the image file that we're going to have to flash to our micro SD card. You can get that from the GitHub page, which I will, of course, link in the description. So just scroll down and grab the latest version here. Unzip it and flash it to your micro SD card. I'm going to be using Win32 Disk Imager because I'm old school. So you can use Etcher, anything, it doesn't really matter. Once you've selected the image file and the correct device, that's that's pretty important. Make sure you have actually selected your micro SD card and not your, your backup drive. Uh, you can click right. This will take a, a few minutes at least, so go grab a coffee. So whilst our SD card is being flashed, let's set up the configuration file we're going to need to drop on our SD card once it's done flashing. So this is my configuration file that I've customized to my liking. I'll leave a link in the description to my config file if you want to just copy me. But let's take a look at this here. I've got the name as default, Ponagotchi. Under whitelist, you have the option to whitelist your own home Wi-Fi network, such that Ponagotchi just won't touch it at all. Under plugins, I've enabled the grid plugin. So the grid plugin is, well, this explains it best. This is the Pone Map, uh, which is on the official Ponagotchi.ai website. If you enable the grid plugin, your Ponagotchi will be visible on this map. This map is an aggregation of all the Ponagotchis active in the whole world and the countries. So you can see in the US, there's like 1,002 active units in the UK where I'm from, 172. It's, it's pretty cool. If you scroll down, you can see the newborn Ponagotchis, uh, when they were active, their names, their status, their status, and how many networks they've pwned so far. So the grid plugin is something cool you should probably enable. Under the UI, I've enabled the display and I've set my display type as Waveshare 2. If you are going to use a different display, you can check the Ponagotchi website and it lists all the compatible models. And then down here, I've set the folder in which the handshakes are going to be stored. This will make it a lot easier later to retrieve those Wi-Fi handshakes. There is a hell of a lot more you can configure in this file if you want. This is the Ponagotchi default.yml. 
So if we have a look here, you can customize the language. There's a hell of a lot more plugins you can enable. There's GPS plugins. If we scroll down some more, you can control the AI. And you can even customize the faces Ponagotchi uses if you want to put something cool and unique in there. Okay, so at this point, my SD card has just been flashed. So if we go to File, uh, Save a Copy As, and we're going to want to save a copy of this on the boot partition as config.yml. Make sure to select all types there. And we'll just tap Save. And let's just check it has actually saved it there, just, just to be sure. And there you have it, config.yml. So now we're done. Well, well, not really. There's some more stuff to do in a second. But at this point, your Ponogotchi himself, assuming everything's set correctly, will work. So let's shove that micro SD card in the pie, stick on our eating hat, and apply power. However, I should note that if you plug your Ponogotchi into a PC, into, into a computer, using his data port here, then he'll start in manual mode and won't actually do anything. You only do this when you want to retrieve handshakes. But for now, we'll use the top port, which is power only without data lines. First boot takes a couple minutes, but eventually we should see signs of life. Unfortunately, there isn't any birth animation. It would be cool if we could see Pongochi hatching from an egg or something. Maybe there's an idea for a mod. So as far as the Raspberry Pi goes, your Ponogotchi is all set up and ready to grab some handshakes. So I don't know, plug him into a power bank, stick him in your bag and take him out for a day. Let him capture some handshakes. You can see the amount of handshakes he's captured in the bottom left there, but you've come home, you wanna retrieve your handshakes. Let's look at how to do that. You're going to want to plug your Ponogotchi into your computer using the USB port second from the top. That's the data ports this time. If all works as expected, once he's connected to your computer, he should say Manu in the bottom right there, which means he's in manual mode. Okay, so this part of the tutorial is OS specific. I'm going to be doing it on Windows because that's what the vast majority of people use. I kind of just assume if you use Linux, you're clever enough to follow the written instructions on the Ponogotchi website and figure it out for yourself. But anyway, let's head over to the computer. Okay, so at this point, we're going to set up our computer here such that we can SSH into our Raspberry Pi and collect those handshakes. So you're going to want to open up a control panel or the control panel and go to Network and Sharing Center and then go to Change Adapter Settings. Okay, so here are all your network connections. The one that's labeled USB Ethernet RNDIS Gadget is our Raspberry Pi. So let's go to Properties. So here you're going to want to click on Internet Protocol version four, well, and go to properties on that. So I've already set up my Ponogotchi. You're going to want to copy my settings here pretty much exactly. Uh, use the following IP address, copy 10.0.0.1, the same subnet mask that I've got. And for the DNS server, that's up to you, but I'm just sticking with Google for this. Once you've done that, tap OK, close, and we can get rid of all of this. And now to test that our Ponogotchi is all set up and ready to SSH into, let's open up a command prompt and just ping 10.0.0.2 and we're getting responses. So our Ponogotchi is set up. Okay, so IMO, the easiest way to copy those handshakes from our Pi to our computer is with a secure copy, a command like this. So this will copy those handshakes from our Raspberry Pi, which just happens to have username Pi at IP address 10.0.0.2. It'll copy the handshakes folder and just deposit it in my computer's root directory. So let's tap enter on that. And yes. And now you'll need to enter the Pi's password. By default, this is Raspberry. Of course, I do recommend SSHing into your Pi separately and changing this password, but by default it is Raspberry. And there you have it, it's copied those handshakes to our C drive. And if I bring that up over here, you can see those PCAP files are there, ready to go. Okay, so that's the main setup and how to retrieve those handshakes, though I imagine you're going to want to appear on that Pone map we saw earlier. So to do that, you're going to need to enable internet connection sharing on your Pi. Or in, in other words, we need to share the internet connection that our computer has 
with our Pi, because right now that the Pi is does is egg out. It doesn't have access to the internet. So this may be a little finicky. Um, <laughs> I got it working, but then it stopped working, so I did a bunch of random things, and now it's working again. So this is how I'm pretty sure you can get it set up. I think. If there's any additions, I'll let you know down in the comments. Okay, so for this, you're going to want to go to the GitHub repository for Ponogotchi. I will link this below. Go to clone or download and just download this zip. Extract the zip and you should have something like this. So let's go into this scripts folder. So this is a PowerShell script that's going to set up the connection sharing for us. So the easiest way to run this is to A, copy the path here, B, open up a PowerShell window. So just search PowerShell, right click and run as administrator. If I click this here, it'll screw up my screen recording. So here's one I opened up earlier. So now we're going to need to run a series of commands. But first, let's cd into that path from before. Okay, so I'll paste the commands you're going to need to run in the description down below. But this is the first one. So this command here runs that win connection share PowerShell script. It bypasses any execution policy we might have, preventing us running PowerShell scripts. And it just sets the Ponogotchi subnet. So tap enter on that. And there you go. So here's the next one. So this runs that same script as before, bypasses the execution policy, but it enables internet connection sharing. So you have to select your main ethernet adapter. This is the one that you have internet access on. For me, it's the one at the bottom there. And then you select your Ponogotchi, which is just the ethernet RNDIS gadget. It'll take a second and there you go. So let's test all is well and internet connection sharing is working properly by SSHing into our Pi. So that's SSH Pi at 10.0.0.2 password, which is default Raspberry. And once we're in, we can just ping 8.8.8.8, fingers crossed. Okay, so here I ran into some issues. Uh, long story short, it didn't work. Uh, so what I did was I backed out of the SSH connection and then ran that enable internet connection command. But instead of enable, I just changed enable to disable. So I disabled it and then I enabled it again, SSH'd back into the Pi and it worked absolutely fine as you'll see here. Maybe this is a consequence of that I already had it set up and I kind of screwed with it by showing you guys how to set it up. But if you do get the same problem, just disable, re-enable, and fingers crossed, you should be fine. Okay, so that's the basic Ponogotchi setup and installation. Though before I debrief you and tell you about Ponogotchi's other amazing features, I need to keep the lights on and tell you about this amazing little device. Now these are Wi-Fi deauthors. They effectively perform a denial of service attack against Wi-Fi networks by utilizing a weakness in the 802.11 protocol. So the idea is you can power him either via micro USB or LiPo battery. I'm gonna plug in a power bank I've got to the side here. So the idea being you scan for Wi-Fi networks. I'm going to select mine, which is please no hacks. So before I launch the deauth attack, I'll show you that my phone here is connected to the network, please no hacks. But as soon as we start the attack, within a couple of seconds, the phone will automatically disconnect. And there you have it. And it will try to reconnect, but it won't be able to for so long as the deauth attack is ongoing. You can see it's joined another network there. Deauthors have many other features, such as spamming Wi-Fi network names. You can even control him with your phone. I will leave a link in the description to my website, maltronics.com, where you can look at picking one of these up. So, back to the video. So, Ponogotchi has a ton of other super cool features. For example, you can actually connect to him with your phone over Bluetooth and retrieve handshakes that way. Alternatively, you can actually view his display on your phone instead of using that Yink display. So I'll make sure to link the Ponogotchi site in the description, of course, so you can check out the community hacks and other plugins that are available. Hell, why not even make your own? The API is up on the website, freely available. Give it a go and let us know what you want to do with it down in the comments. 
So thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Not often does something like Ponagotchi come along. I, I've really enjoyed taking a look at it. And if there's any of those community hacks or plugins you'd like me to cover on this channel, then let me know down in those comments and I'll make sure to give them a go. But as always, thanks for watching and stay tuned for more hacking videos. Have a good one.